we were talking to Steve Case earlier in the broadcast just in terms of trying to make the comparison or not of where you think we really are in the economy and specifically within the world of tech valuations. What are you seeing? So, Andrew, uh, good to see you guys. I would say that uh, today's pain is tomorrow's gain. And I think uh, over the years we've seen this in tech, you know, multiple times and in big cycles like the dot com bubble, which is, you know, valuations get too high. Um, people are not focused on their core businesses. Co customer acquisition costs, you know, become too high. And there's a, you know, there's a blow up, which we saw last week. But I would say we're probably at the start of the next generation of the, uh, the internet. And I think if you're a investor, you know, I think uh, attention Kmart shoppers should be your uh, cue that there's probably some great companies that are undervalued right now in the market. And, you know, personally, my personal investment side, I'm, I'm investing this week because I see a lot of great companies undervalued. And I think if you're a company, it's a great time to go back to making sure that your core business is really solid and that your investments and dollars are going towards where the future is going. So I remain incredibly bullish on, um, you know, tech overall. And right. I think the correction was, was frankly needed. And uh, I think you're going to you see think, the next- You think this is an opportunity. You actually think that things are on sale here. This is not a, uh, you're not, you're not trying to catch a falling knife anymore at this point. Yeah, and I mean, and to the extent uh, you're not, what are you, what, where, where are you planning on thinking about putting your money? Yeah, I think there's um, two big trend lines that I'm looking at, Andrew. One is on the FANG stocks. Uh, the FANG companies are doing so much in revenue and, and good for them for doing that. But their future growth has got to either come from new product development or actually eating their own customers, which they seem to be more eating their own customers. At this point, I think there's a lot of fear in the market about how much data they're taking down from customers and using it competitively. The second um, thesis is that you know Web3 and the addition of a massive amount of data into the marketplace that can be owned on a direct to consumer basis will change the relationship between consumers and businesses. And, you know, I'm really betting on the direct to consumer side of the business. We're doing it at flow code. We're doing it with you guys at, at CNBC. But I, I think um, just like AOL and Yahoo and the big early companies, I think the FANG companies doesn't look like it now, but I think there's cracks in that wall. It may take 10 or 15 years for these other companies to grow to be that size, but I definitively think we're at the next step. And I think right now is a great buying opportunity for companies that are it, in the new economy it, of the internet. But Tim, into what? To the extent that there are public companies out there right now that you think are going to be taking advantage of Web3. We were even debating the future of what Web3 is or isn't over the next decade. Yeah, I think there's um, I think there's companies like in the CRM game, for instance. I, I don't I don't um, have any stake in these companies other than some of them are personal investor, but we don't have any business relationships with them other than normal customer relationships. Something like a HubSpot, which I would consider to be a much better version of CRM that allows us to do much more machine learning on our CRM systems. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's one big area where like owning customer first party data. I think there's companies like Clear. Um, that uh, are partners of ours, but I see what Clear is doing in um, airports and in sports venues and things like that. And, and so I see I, you see a set of companies that are enabling a much deeper level of CRM and customer relationships, which I think Web3 is all about data and first party data. And I think the, the businesses that help people build their first party direct to consumer relationships are going to be big winners. And those are the types of companies, you know, I look at as the future of where Web3 is going to be going. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.